Hey, welcome everybody. This is Brent English, president of Robust Tools, and today I'm here in Sam Angelo's really well-equipped shop. And Sam's one of our favorite dealers, and he's going to do yet another YouTube video for you. So please enjoy. Now this is Sam and Cheryl in Montana, and today I'm making a project for my daughter-in-law and son, Jennifer and Josh. I'm going to show you pictures of the finished project as we go along here. I'm really going to show you some detailed shots of the lid and the way I made this uh, so you know where I'm going with this video and this project. It's a little bit detailed. I did a lot of work off camera so uh, it's really really cool I think. Uh, you don't need a lot of special tools. It helps if you have a sanding center but I'll show you pictures throughout the video and at the very end, I'll show you more videos and uh, pictures of this project. Assault and cellar, no. Salt. <laughs> Salt and pepper cellars for Jen. <laughs> okay. okay, now over here, I'm going to show you the components of my, uh, my project, my salt or pepper cellar. Here it is. It's got a really, really cool lid made from uh, some ash. And I'll show you the body and, and, the, and the bottom of this. But this is what I'm going for. Now, the lid swings. It's a swinging lid, okay? And back here, I've got a magnet that holds that lid firmly in place so it doesn't spill. So let me show you some more pictures and we'll get going. This is a how-to video, and there's lots of components to this, so it's kind of interesting, I think, so stay tuned. Thanks. Welcome again to my shop. Today I'm going to make a salt and pepper cellar. I'm going to make two of those, actually. And I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to approach this, because it's... To me, it's a lot about making a prototype. I'm a big believer in making a prototype, and I probably did that more when I was making furniture and cabinets than, than I do now as a wood turner. But this is a project that's going to take on a couple little twists and, and curves as I go down the road. Anyway, I'm going to bring you in a little closer, and I'm going to show you my setup so far. I've got a, a drawing for my project. So, um, I was going to mention David Marks, if you uh, used to watch the old Woodworks TV program, the DIY show, uh, amazing. And David always made prototypes, and it'll save you time and material in the long run. So let me bring you in a little closer, and I'll show you where I'm going with this project. Okay, now, I spent the better part of the morning today kind of setting this all up, figuring out what was going to be the base and the lid and also the main body for my, my project. Here is a drawing I made, and I need to spend more time doing this. It really pays off in the end. This is a top view right here, and I'll be able to show you in more detail uh, exactly what I have in mind for this. Um, this is going to be a little offset right in here on my lid. This is kind of the lid right here. So this small uh, pencil point right there will be the pivot point, and I'm going to put a magnet right there. Oh, I didn't mention this is going to have a, a lid that kind of uh, rotates in a closed position and then opened up. So again, I'm going to make two of these. Um, this is another detail of my lid, the dimensions, and I'm going to aim for about three and a quarter inches in diameter. It's going to be a little bit wider than it is deep, okay? And then this is a cross profile down here of my piece. Anyway, let me move on here. This is going to be the body of my project, the salt or pepper cellar. So what I did, I've, I've cut these at a 45 degree angle, these pieces. I glued this one together and this one together. 
Okay, now I am no segmenter. And some of you guys might be laughing at me, but uh, this just happened to line up perfectly. And I cut a little bit of this inside out uh, to save me some hollowing later on. All right, and then, uh, well, right here I've got just a rough drawing of the shape of that. I'm going to end up cutting a lot of this on the bandsaw and turning a little bit of it. Now, originally I intended to make my segments out of this ash. It's got some nice ripple in it and it's really kind of cool. But I was having trouble uh, cutting it. I don't have a table saw anymore. So I was doing that on my chop saw. And I thought, you know, it's a little bit time consuming. I've got a locking mechanism that worked okay. Here are some, some parts to that that I cut out. And I, I quit on that idea. I went to this thicker cherry. And this is going to be a cross grain turning. And part of the reason for that is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got some really nice figure in this. So I will take this over on my chop saw and just cut this into segments like this. <clears throat> Here's two of those segments glued together. And if you do this, you can simply take a piece of sandpaper and help level that off. But this really, really fits in there very nicely. I don't see any gaps, but anyway. Um, the next item, <laughs> the next question is, what do I use for a lid? And what do I use for a base? Now, I right now I intend to use some marble wood. And I found some of this. I've, I've cut this, whoops, excuse me. I cut this one round. So I'm going to have a salt and a, a pepper cellar. So there's one lid and there's the other lid. Now, as I was doing this, I ran into some really, really nice ash. So I'm not sure. I was thinking of making the base out of this so it would, it would sit on there like that, something like that. But you know what? That would make a beautiful lid. Right now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. For the lid and the base, let me show you one more little item and we'll get to work here. We'll do something. Um, I made a template. This is all about Prototypes and templates, okay? This is approximately the diameter of my, my project, okay? And I cut one of the sections out right there. And as I was lining up uh, and measuring these different uh, components, that just fits right in there and it shows me how big I can make this and, and the exact circle and all that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of cherry over to my chop saw and I'm going to cut out all the components, okay? And then I'm going to glue them together and I'll show you that. So that's the next step. All right, now we're over at my chop saw and I'm ready to cut up the other four pieces for my other salt cellar. And if you're going to cut up a piece of wood and if you want to cut a piece this small, it's better if you start with a really large piece and you have more wood to hang on to or hold uh, farther away from the blade. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm all set up with a stop block right here. The first thing I need to do is cut an angle on this, this end of my piece. All right, I have my four pieces. Now let's go back over to the workbench and we'll glue these together. All right, I'm ready to glue up my salt and pepper cellars. I've got uh, two sets of 
four pieces that I'm going to glue together. This is one of them. And what I've done on this setup right here, I'm going to glue these in a, in a half orientation. I'll do half the side and the other half and I'll make sure it's uh, it's nicely trued up. So what I've done is I've cut a I've cut a notch on the top of my my pieces and I'll just put a spring clamp. All right, so I'll just put a spring clamp right here that'll hold that together and then I can put a clamp from here to here and that'll be a very nice connection and I just need to make sure that that this uh, area right here is completely flush and straight and then I'll glue the two halves together so I'm gonna go over in the bandsaw and I won't show you but I need to cut notches in all these corners for this particular glue up right here all right now I'm going to show you my setup for gluing this together I'm gonna to just glue one and what I have here as a nice flat surface this is just some old flooring from our house that they left and gives me a nice flat surface and that's what I want to accomplish is have this area right down here completely flat and I'll glue two halves together so I got my my notches here alright and I'm going to use some tight bond 2 glue for that, nothing better. Little foam brush, and I'm going to just put some glue on both sides of my pieces. Now, back in the day, I used to uh, do a lot of gluing. Whatever I was doing, uh, furniture or breadboards or whatever. And I really felt that it's a good idea to let that glue soak in even for 30 seconds. Just let it sit there. That allows the glue to soak into the wood. Otherwise, if you clamp that, clamp these two pieces together really, really tightly, you end up with uh, maybe a joint that's starved for glue. So. I've got a piece of wax paper on there, which is uh, a nice item to have in your shop. So I'm going to just put my clamp on here. In fact, I think what I'll do is put a couple on here since I have the room right there. Make sure I'm nice and flat. And if I need to later on, I can level that surface up with some sandpaper. So. I need to get a clamp. Alright, I've got a clamp here. I'm going to go from end to end right here. Eh, i got too much stuff on my workbench here. Okay, maybe you can see this line right here. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on that. And I've got some nice squeeze out right there. Make sure this is flush. That looks good on both sides. So I'm ready to go. I can just let that sit and cure. And then I've got my other connections to put together. I won't show you that. All right, I've got all my parts cut out and ready to go. Uh, I'm ready to go over on my lathe and do a little bit of turning. And I'm not sure how much turning I'm going to be able to do on this. A lot of uh, work on my sanding center and that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you the first uh, salt cellar or pepper cellar blank. And what I have here, I've got a layer of cherry on the outside. And on the inside, I've got this configuration. I got some maple sandwiched between a couple layers of walnut, thin walnut veneer right here. So that's the next glue up which I will do off camera. So I'll sandwich that like that in between 
the cherry and it'll end up like this. I've got a hole drilled in the very center with the big Forstner bit and that'll help me line that up and true it up on my lathe. Okay, this is going to be the lid. I should say these are going to be the lids. I've decided on this ash and it's really, really nice. Um, this little offset here is going to be where my pivot point is going to be and my magnet right there on the on the top of my piece. And here's a template. It's out of a little piece of uh, masonite. And I've got a hole drilled right here that'll, that'll uh, match up with my magnet. And then this one is going to match up with with a brass rod. That's going to be my pivot point. And I'll show you that in more detail later on. Now what I can do um, is I'll double stick tape that on to my base and drill my pivot point and my magnet location right there. And I can do the same thing on the underside of my lid right there. And that will guarantee that everything will line up. All right, let's see, what else can I show you? I think that's about it. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use for, for the base. Um, this is that marble wood that I was going to use for the top. And I think I'm going to save that for another project and just put maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe another piece of cherry on the bottom. Okay, <laughs> I'm all ready. Let's go over to the lathe and see what we can we can turn out of this project. And by the way, I'm going to drill my holes before I do any turning on this. Okay. Okay, let me show you my setup here. I've got both of my bases roughed out and both of my lids roughed out. So this is the underside of the lid and that's going to correspond to the magnet and that pivot point right there. So I'm going to work on the base first. All right. And what I've done, I've drilled uh, a hole with a Forstner bit all the way through, and that's going to help me center everything up. So I think I'll work on the, the bottom of this first. I've just got some pin jaws here. And when I expand that, I can reach that uh, recess made by the Forstner bit. All right, now I've taken a bowl gouge and I've cleaned up this surface right here. And the next thing I need to do is establish the internal diameter right there. And I've got that set on my calipers. Okay, so it's going to go right there. And I'm going to just see if I can mark that with with my pencil. See how close I can get. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a simple square end scraper and work on that recess. Okay, now at some point along here, I need to work on on the, the base, okay? And what I'm thinking is, I may do more of a plug that's going to sit in there. If I put something that's going to sit proud of this, it's going to really, really increase the height of my, my salt cellar or my pepper cellar. This is, this is an old one from our kitchen, all right? And it's... Uh, a little bit smaller. Still got a little salt in there. All right, and it's uh, a good pattern to go by. I don't want to make this enormous. And I can actually take off quite a bit of this uh, diameter right in here. Let's mark that. And 
And I'm going to take this off and show you something that I need to be careful about. I've got this, I've got this pivot point drilled in there already. So I can't come in too far this way or else I'll run into that somewhere around this, this radius. So I got to be careful about that. And this is nice because you can just recheck this a number of times and yeah. Okay. A little bit more with my scraper. Just going a little bit deeper and I got to be really, really careful. I don't stick my finger in there with that thing rotating around there. Okay, now I'm going to work on the external diameter, the outside diameter of my, my cellar. Turn my speed up just a little bit. Now let me show you on my lid what I'm dealing with here. What I'm, I'm trying to be careful um, as I establish this outside diameter, I don't want to run into the uh, pivot point right here, that drilled area. Okay, and if I come in too, too far down here, I may run into that. So I'm going to double check that as I go. I've got this trued up. So let's just take this off here and see yeah and i've got uh, quite a bit of uh, space on that i can go quite a bit more i'm going to try to lighten this piece up as much as i can so a little bit more work in this area and i can only go up so far right here because then i'm going to run into this i'm going to have to do some shaping with my sanding center on that I can go up to there. Okay, now let me show you where I'm at right here. I've got this outside diameter pretty much where I need it to be. Okay, I've got a couple calipers working here. This is the outside diameter. And this area right in here, which is going to correspond to my lid, that's where the magnet's going to go. I really don't need that very deep. So I can take a little bit more of this area off. I'm doing a lot of work off camera. And all of this from this level around here, I will probably take that off on the bandsaw because I simply can't turn it because this is in the way. All right. So a little bit more work on this. I got some torn grain and I'll probably work on the plug. I'm going to call it a plug right in here. The depth isn't all that critical. It's going to have a, um, at least that much volume like in my old salt cellar right here. So I'm going to clean this up, sharpen my tool, and make this surface as clean as I can get it. Okay, now I need to make something 
very clear. At the beginning of the video, I took, I took some time to uh, glue up four segments right here, and that was to minimize the effect of the end grain. All right, and I've got a piece of wood here. All right, so this is end grain. The grain is running across this way, and if I were to chuck this up in my, in my lathe, like a bowl, this is a cross grain turning, I would hit end grain, side grain, end grain. So what I've done here is I've minimized the effect of that end grain, but it's a lot better. And it'll be a little bit of a design feature as I go along. So I'm going to take a skew chisel. Make sure I'm clearing there. Now I got a little, a little flat I need to take off there. This is a cross grain turning, so I've got a skew chisel and I don't want to uh, present that tool in a cutting orientation. I'm going to have it absolutely horizontal like this, level with the floor, and I'm going to just scrape that a bit and clean it up. Turn my speed up a little bit. And I'm getting some nice shavings off that. Let's uh, shut her down and, and see what we got. Yeah, that's much better. That's a much better surface. Okay, I've done some work on my, my base. And I've decided to go ahead and use this piece of marble wood since it was cut down quite a bit. So it's going to go in like this. I've got a good fit ready to glue. It'll be flush with this rim right here. And right here, I'll part that off and then I'll glue that together. But I'm gonna leave this out because what I've been doing is uh, using this recess as a chucking area, an expansion uh, recess, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, I got the outside trued up. I need to do a little bit of hand work on that, a little bit more, more sanding. And uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. And then I'm, I'm going to work on the lid. So this piece of wood comes from a crotch in uh, an ash log. All right, I am ready to work on my lid. So I'll show you how I have that chucked up here. I had my lid uh, stuck to a glue block with double stick tape so I could establish a recess right here. This is the underside of my lid. So I'm attaching this with some shark jaws right there. On the other side, I've got this uh, hole drilled for my pivot point, little brass rod. So I've got to be careful about that. I've got this marked on the side right here for the depth. And as I round this over, I can't go down any farther or I'll run into that hole. Now I can see the problem right now. I'm really not going to be able to reach this area and round that over. I may do that with a router. That might be the simplest thing to do. So I've got my camera repositioned so you can see this. I like that. I can, uh, I can work on that with uh, some sandpaper. 
Okay, I'm going to go just a little bit farther on that. And I'm just using a, a bowl gouge. That just indicates uh, that my tool rest is just a little, a little too high. Well, I went to a lot of work to establish that, that recess on the bottom. Uh, and I really wasn't able to do a lot of turning on on the top of this. I think what I'm going to do is go to a, a scraper, clean that up just a little bit. So I'm going to use a negative rake scraper and all I can do uh, at this point is scrape with my gouge and I think I'm better off scraping with an actual scraper. Alright, turn my lathe speed up little bit. I'm turning at uh, 1400 RPM. All right, let's just uh, I bring you up to speed here. This is the piece I've been working on. This is the base of that that piece. Again, here is my my plug for the bottom of that. Not quite um, fitting in there very well, but you can see how much I've got to take off from this one to get to this point. And I did a lot of that on my bandsaw, so I'm going to take my lid off. And just kind of see how I'm doing here. I like the, the shape of that, but I'm going to do lots of work off camera and off the lathe. That's going to be a really pretty, pretty piece. That's the lid. Oh, and then there's the, the part that holds my magnet and the pivot point. Here's one of the brass rods. It'll fit right in in there. All right, and I think I will definitely take this on my my little handheld trim router and just uh, route this area right in here. Just do a little bit of a round over and a lot of sanding. And I'll get back to you. All right, now I'm working on my second lid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my trim router and I'm going to put a little round over right around here. And I discovered that if I chuck this up into my, my shark jaws, that makes a very nice holder for my lid. It's a little bit on the small side, so you got to be careful with something like that. Okay, now here's a very important aspect of this. I'm not going to turn my lathe on, all right? I'm simply going to lock my headstock right there. That'll hold my lid, and I'll just take my, my trim router and go around that top edge. And that works pretty good. I'll adjust my router and go down a little bit more and I'll take care of those those burn marks. All right that did a pretty good job. Now I just need to do a little bit of sanding around that and my lid will be finished. So I'm going back and forth from my lid to my base and I'm 
working on this area right here. So this is the base and I need to reduce this thickness a little bit right here. And what I'm using is a negative rake scraper. This is a D-Way tool, a box master scraper. So I'm working on this area right in here and I've got a nice burr on that tool. Let's take a look and see what we can do. Very, very gently. Right in there. All right, I'm getting there. Right in this area right here on the top side is where my magnet will go. So I, I think I'm downed about as far as I can go on that. So I'm going to take uh, some files and sandpaper and just work this in and kind of blend it together. I'm using a little bit of my Sam Maloof mixture. Varnish, polyurethane, mineral spirits, boiled linseed oil. This is the top of my lid. So I'm applying my first coat or two of an oil finish. And I'm going to cover the entire project with an oil finish. And on the inside, I'm not going to put any finish except for a little bit of beeswax. This is my ash lid. And that was a very good decision to make that. Uh, lid out of the ash. So, so I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on the base and put some finish on it. Attach the uh, plug into the bottom of the base. And at the end of the video I'm going to show you quite a few more pictures and clips of the final project. Thanks for watching. Well, there you have it. There's my uh, salt and pepper cellars that we made for Jen. And uh, that took a lot of time off camera and off the lathe also. A lot of sanding and shaping and different things. I like the design. I think I kind of came up with that design. But let me show you some detailed pictures right here of this. And I appreciate you hanging in there with me and uh, I would also appreciate it if you subscribed, uh, leave a comment and hit that like button. So I'll talk to you next time. This is for you, Jen and Josh. Talk to you later.